and welcome to Drum Corps on 4. I'm Tony Capstick. And I'm Rob Lusheen. Since the spring, Rob and I have been finding out what Drum Corps marching music is all about. We've been following Drum Corps competitions in Scotland, in Yorkshire and in London in the build-up to the British finals here at West Bromwich Football Ground. And we've also been travelling quite a bit abroad. Tony's been over to Flushing in Holland to cover the Anglo-Dutch competition, and I've been travelling down the east coast of the United States with last year's British champions, the Dagenham Crusaders. As you can probably tell, Rob's an American and I'm a Yorkshireman. I'd never been to America before, but in August, Rob and I went to Miami to the World Championships, and it was hot. It was 110 degrees. Absolutely wicked it was. Not only was it hot, it was humid, but the Dagenham Crusaders, who, by the way, are the first British group ever to go to the World Champions, did rather well. And you'll be finding out later on in this series just how they did over there. Now, of course, Drum Corps may be a new name to you because, as I understand it, they've only been organized in Britain for the last four years. That's right. And, in fact, we went out in the street and asked people all around Britain what they knew about Drum Corps. Drum Corps? Never heard of it. Drum Corps? I'm not clear. Don't know. Come on forever. Easy to be here. <laughs> drum corps. Drum corps, yes. Mm. No. Drunk. Drum corps. No, I don't know nothing. <laughs> Could it be the Salvation Army or the Scottish fight band? Drum corps. Drum corps. Well, I don't know much. Drum corps. Drum corps, yeah. Nothing. It just rings a bell with Boys Brigade or something like that. Drum? You mean drumming drums? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> it's those. Banner waving bands, aren't they? Those like American things, aren't they? That was the bridgeman from Bayonne in New Jersey, giving us an idea of what a, a drum corps really is. It's exciting stuff. But what really lifts a drum corps away from a marching band for me is the competitive aspect and the atmosphere. In Miami, Rob talked to Dr. Bernard Baggs, a drum corps judging expert. Dr. Bernard Baggs, you've been a judge of these competitions for since time immemorial, I guess. Well, I've been a judge since I was an army band leader in World War II, and then they were looking for people to bring band knowledge into the drum corps activity because it was then starting to blossom into a far more sophisticated procedure, so I'm still around. Let me ask you in layman's language, what exactly do these judges look for? Well, they are first of all either brass judges, percussion judges, or marching maneuvering. What they're looking for is to decide which corps is having new horizons, new standards addressed. As a consequence, they're looking for innovative concepts, and yet they have to have musical depth so that we have the traditional concepts. Is it sound good? Is it in tune? Is it lyrical being considered at the same time? Are they doing the marching challenges, which are becoming more and more ballet and less military, as you'll notice, you see. In other words, a band that, say, went with some old favorite and really didn't try to do anything elaborate, even though they did a great job, might not score too well. Uh, if you'll watch for the Bridgman tonight, I think, else, the Bridgman made the finals by doing exactly what you said, because they've made their commitment that their style calls for direct entertainment. And so long as their percussion section can meet the requirements of accuracy, and their percussion section happens to be outstanding, understand? And they're marching meet the fundamental competitive standards, and their music does nothing else. They're here, they've made the finals, and will be in for another whole year, and they're playing the music which satisfies the public, strictly. One more question that the public I know would be wondering about, and that is, why are these guys wandering in and out of the crowd, right on the field? Because they are checking on the individual competence of the brass members. It's as that each student must be recital competent. So they have to be up close, in other words. The, the individual brass judge is checking on the individual competence, all right? The individual percussion judge is watching for errors that he could only decide uh, in close, and also running back to the mallets and the timpani, etc. And the marching people are taking a vertical view and a horizontal view, and have to keep changing their positions depending upon the drill. Positive improvements, good level of recovery, as a matter of fact, by all in, all concerned, and certainly appreciate that. The artistic endeavor out of the. Does it bother the kids to have that happen? 
not not at this level because they have no choice about it anyway, right? Well, in most cases, they would just walk on the judge if necessary, and the judges know that. Too. Has that ever happened to you? Not to me, because I'm a high school band leader become a school administrator, and I kind of sense understand when the kids are having a little turmoil. And no kid will ever walk on his high school principal. That's a fact. Thank you so much for being with us. Dr. Bernard Baggs, one of the finest and most experienced judges of this kind of competition, right here in the Orange Bowl. Tell us to keep track of the scores. We've got two score data coordinators. Now, we aren't sexist at Channel 4, so we've got one of each. And in the middle, Rob. Oh, no, you don't, Capstick. With me is Beverly Isherwood. Hello. And Gary Dixon. Hello. Well, Gary, tell us what you're going to be doing today. Well, we're responsible for getting the scores together. I'm responsible for marching and manoeuvring the brass and percussion sections. And along with Beverly's, they're all collated together for the final score. But how do you keep track of it all? Well, we've got the help of a little computer, ah. which gives us all the scores in detail. That sounds great. Now, Beverly, you've been in beauty competitions yourself. You must obviously appreciate the pressure these kids are under. I know how tough it can be out there, and it's also very nerve-wracking. Anyway, I'm giving the timing and penalty score, the general effect, and the total score. So you're giving both the good and the bad side. That's right. <laughs> Uh, the bad part about it is that Dave, the director, has us running up and down the track. But that's, that's very important, actually, because obviously our responsibility is to get the scores to camera as quickly as we can. Well, you both look like you're in good shape, fit, nice running suits and all that. Not as fit as the boys and girls in the cause, though. All right. Well, back to you, Tony. And that's how we'll be telling you the final results. But what about all the work that goes on before those final results? Well, why not let the cause themselves tell you what goes on behind the scenes? We march on a field and we go out up front and we play instruments and we have a colour guard and a rifle guard and they throw the flags about and their rifles and it's good, it's just better than ma uh, marching bands. <laughs> Virtual fact is a sign for me really because I also have a 9 to 5 job, I attend every rehearsal, I have no problems of getting there. Um, it doesn't affect my job in any way, only when there is the off chance of working overtime at weekends. <laughs> such a big attraction because there's something going on all the time um, I know we do spend a lot of time practicing and it takes up a lot of our weekends but you can't explain the feeling when you finished your show and you're out in the field and you're waiting for the presentations and perhaps you've got 24 counts that haven't been going right and they've gone right that particular show it's just so much we travel I mean obviously we have our ups and downs but it is so interesting Drum Corps to me is, is really magic. It's really hard to sum up what I really feel for it. Uh, there's something inside me which, which wants me to um, do a lot more for the activity from what I'm doing now. Um, to see top cores in the States and ourselves perform is just sheer magic. Uh, knowing that you're a part of that thing, um, you've helped, um, you're a part of the uh, national or uh, worldwide activity. It's really, really something to be, to be a part of. The Beach Man! As you can probably tell by the costumes, the beachmen model themselves on the bridgemen of Bayonne, New Jersey. Now obviously the Americans started this thing at drum corps, so it's the ambition of most corps members and directors to travel to the United States to meet American drum corps, and if possible for the whole corps to go to the USA on tour. A very expensive business. In December 1982, John Johnson, corps director of Dagenham Crusaders, flew to the USA to try and set up just such a tour.
weather partly cloudy, breezy through Sunday, slight chance of showers. Small craft advisory is in effect. It's windy. Highs today in the mid-80s, low tonight about 75, high tomorrow about 85. Long A1A 81 in the Palm Beaches to 79 in Key West. Miami has 80 and it's 81 in Fort Lauderdale. Now, a 25-minute music mix on 97 A1A. Well, I'm in Miami because uh, this is the uh, Tom Quinn's National Marching Music Convention, which is the first time they've actually had a seminar or a number of clinics like this. The uh, beautiful opportunity, as far as I'm concerned, is that I am able to meet the directors of the uh, Top Drum and Bugle Corps in the United States and uh, also to arrange for my corps to actually visit um, here at this country in August next year for two weeks. Well, the corps from Great Britain, Dugganham Crusaders, are planning to come here in uh, August for our world championship. And their primary reason to come here, I believe, is the exposure of their young people to our performing units. Uh, they are the very finest drum and bugle corps in Great Britain and possibly Europe. And their growth depends upon the new standard they have to achieve has to be developed. And, they, and without the young people understanding what that standard is, uh, their growth will be slow. Uh, by being exposed to the drum corps from this country and Canada, they'll get a better feel for what the world standards are and as a result the growth will be a lot more significant. So it's important that they come here, it's not so important how they fare the first time or so. Marching music is very important to us. Um, drum corps from United Kingdom or any place in the world coming to this country to compete is extremely important to our expansion. We hope at some time in this decade we can begin the process of worldwide competitive marching music and this is just the very beginning of that whole concept. Um, like most Americans, we don't know boundaries and we think we own everything. Um, it's very difficult for us to comprehend that uh, another country uh, is important to where we're going because we're so self-centered. Uh, you better cut that because I'll get kicked out of this country. <laughs> um, it's important to our activity here to understand that Drum and Bugle Corps is something that we don't own. And the Corps from, we've had a Corps from Japan and now the Corps from Great Britain will just establish that in the minds of our people. We are also a very helping people. Uh, and when, they when the Corps comes here next summer, they'll find they'll have everything they need and have more help than they need as well and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll feel obligated to do uh, what's necessary to make their stay here uh, excellent and superior experience for the kids. <laughs> I think everybody has, the, has uh, enough familiarity with competitive sports to understand that that uh, provides a sense of excitement, uh, both for the, the participants uh, in the contest and also for the spectators. If you didn't have that, of course, people wouldn't have the same interest. But I think competition in Drum and Bugle Corps is different for a, a number of reasons. Uh, they're not out for blood. There isn't any real physical combat. Uh, the competition, in a sense, is with themselves. Uh, they are trying to do better than they have done before. I uh, remember last year, uh, the, the Blue Devils, this is a drum and bugle corps from uh, Concord, California, um, had a button made up, and the button said, Beat the Blue Devils. Uh, and in a sense, it was a challenge to the other drum and bugle corps, but also it was a challenge to themselves. Now, another aspect to this is that many of the kids in the drum and bugle corps uh, will travel around they will have belonged to th two or three different corps, perhaps more even. Um, so they, they know personally uh, many of the kids who were in the other organizations. 
and they don't have the same kind of antagonism that you might expect. It. And it's not that they don't you know, argue and they don't uh, uh, feel that they're squaring off in some way. But at the end of a show, you usually feel a, a sort of closing of ranks and, and everybody uh, usually agrees who the winner of the show was and they, and they congratulate them. I have myself taken people to these shows and it always happens the same way. Someone comes, they've been told that it's going to be a wonderful experience. Uh, they've been led to believe that it's going to be very exciting and of course, you know, it's, it's a bit of a hype if, if you know what I mean. And yet the same thing always happens about two-thirds of the way through the show and this happens because they start with the chords that are not really quite as good as the ones that come on toward the latter part of the show. About two-thirds of the way through the show the person will always turn and say, you mean it gets better than this? Right, sort of like we old kids putting graffiti on the wall. That makes it seem a lot of time what it's nice, but it really is. I think it's nice for walks and that the good movers can do all sorts in the Yorkshire. All kinds of drum cars. There's about 70 members in the band and 40 girls which are in the colour guard. Well, the, the band members, their uniforms are just being re-kitted out in, in new uniforms. It cost over £100 each. Each? And the 17? And the 70 in the band, so... I can't look that out, but it's a lot of money. Pound. It's yeah. a lot of money. It is a lot of money. To be yeah. raised in a small community yeah. like this. Which brings me to a question I'd like to ask David, actually. Can we just have a look at you? <laughs> um, most of these bands are in... I suppose big cities, uh, but Elland, as you've just told us, is is a fairly small place with a population of about what sixteen thousand, did you say? Yeah. Uh, is everybody that's in the band local? Are they from Elland? Well, most of them are, but there's one boy who comes from York. He used to live in Elland, but he moved to York, so he come back. Well, he still counts he, as local. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he comes every Thursday, and not on a Tuesdays. And he travels from York. Now that's, yeah, that's yeah, a fair long way. Yeah, long that way. must be. He comes by train, does he? Yeah. 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 And w what do you think about it yourself being in the band? It's good fun. It keeps kids off the street. 
is it sort of militarising the kids? No, 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 I wouldn't say that nowhere near militarising at all. They, uh, they go there, they have a good time. They travel around together. And uh, in fact, they, they enjoy themselves that much that a lot of them want to stay on when it's time when they should, should give up kind mm. of thing, you know. And uh, they've just had the, uh, the years upgraded from 18 to 22. They can stay in there until yeah. they're 22, you know, and uh, some of them have taken advantage of that. Mm. So, uh, so it's, they, not, it's, it's not playing at soldiers. Oh, no. You, no. you answer me that. No, it's good. You just go there and enjoy yourselves. Learn music. It teaches you. You could make a living one day. Mm. You um, read music? Yeah. Yeah. And you do gymnastics and mm. play games. It's not just all practicing all night. You do activities in your spare time and all. And it keeps you fit as well, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. How, how much practicing do you do? Well, when I'm, when I'm in my tea's getting ready, which takes about... Uh, half an hour, something like that, I practice while my tea's yeah. getting ready. Well, OK, then, if, you, if you're that fit, nip down and get one of them sheep for us and we'll have some lamb chops at your house for us, Steve. Go and get your bag, come on. <laughs> the emblem of the boys' brigade is the anchor. And ever since we as a unit have been doing competitive band work, since 1961, we've always featured the anchor in any one of our marching displays. And in 1964, it seemed pertinent to us to adopt the trade name, if you like, of Anchorman. Uh, purely following the American pattern, uh, which didn't really become popular here, well, maybe only five years ago. Uh, everybody has names, trade names, like that now. That's why we do it. And taking that from there, we've followed that through to what we think is a logical conclusion, so far as uh, being called the Anchorman, we've pursued a nautical image at all levels with regard to, we call us buses after British aircraft carriers. We uh, have adopted uh, naval naval uniforms for the Corps uh, at all level. We're, all of us music isn't nautical, but uh, we started this year with the Seahawk and we played the f music from the Mutant and the Bounty last year. But we're playing St. Louis Blues and other stuff as well, you know. But in real terms, if we're in competition, we're, if we think we're in competition with ourselves, and at this stage of the game, 1983, we're far better in front, we're far more in front than what we were in 1982. And there's certainly a better atmosphere in the, in the core with the kids. And we've got a lot more of them. Oh! Oh! 25th day, we start at half past seven. Look around you. Look, they're all here. Black left, Jagger Green, makes a difference. He's come from York, right? Half past seven. OK? Get your horn out. Just, you've got to be good in car, and if Mr B tells you off, he does right. Because there's some that really want to work, and there's some that mess around, but they want to work because of other people. Discipline is a part of a car, because if you don't want to learn, you've just got to go out and roam the streets. And if you do want to learn, you stay in and do hard work, and sweat like hell. Therefore we shall go through now the last year's show music. Okay? Now the ladies are next door so we should be trying the uniforms on for sizing and we'll get the tailor to come next week for the for, for the new guard uniforms and to measure you guys up it hasn't got any. So we'll play through now last year's show music for Newcastle. Alright? Starting with the mutiny. Right? I did music and I learned to play carnet. At first I used to play a um, ricarda, but I didn't like that so I left it. And I played a carnet then and they learnt me all the fingerings and how to tongue properly. And a concert once I were in. Tonguing is when you like in Seahawk, you've got to play it fast and not all slurring it, just playing it in one note. You've got to tongue it with your tongue, using your tongue. So I like going and not going blowing out time.
think drum corps is utter magic. I I hear corps play in the States and it gives me uh, it sends something to me which uh, which not, not which which I can't sort of sum up really. It's hard to express in words. It's just the feeling that what they're playing, what they're doing, um, you you can do yourself. You can do yourself. There's no limits there at all. The norm, the only person, young kid on the street, can do it. He'll be trained how to do it. There's no barriers at all. There's no gates. The beachmen consists mostly of uh, West Indian kids. Although we find that we ask white kids and other people who come and join the corps, but they think because we're black, we're very racial, we're very violent. <laughs> we're no, we're not racial, we're not violent. Uh, we've got a few white kids in the corps, been there since it started. And if you ask them, they'll tell you the same thing. We're no different from any, any white kids or whatnot. Uh, being as we are black, we don't play reggae or soul or whatnot because we want to uh, appeal to a much wider audience. So, let's have a look at the Beachman trying to appeal to that wider audience. Because it don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. They heard our show some years back. We did play a piece called Pagliacci, uh, and it's 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 a it's a big contrast playing uh, pop in, on the sort of instruments we're playing down to classical. It, we uh, cater for a, a wide range of music, and the normal person in the street, when they hear when they hear us play, will understand what we're trying to do. Well, we'll appreciate it because we try and cater for the normal person walking on the street. So as they don't, uh, when they hear us play, they don't say, what the bloody, what the hell is that? They will say, ah, oh, I recognise that, and that sounds good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, tell me about how you get in trouble with your wife, because you keep spending time at ECU came Trevor Howarth, executive director, always in trouble with his wife, and Selwyn Bottomley, always in trouble with everyone. Yeah. A great deal of time is spent on raising funds to actually run the corps, uh, which means that there isn't much time to do the, do the thing that they joined for in the first place. Uh, a lot of effort goes into fundraising, and it's obviously a very big worry all the time. Uh, there is enough money to keep the show on the road, in effect. And whilst there are only, uh, at this point in time, two shows in Scotland, all the remainder of being in England, it simply means that the English courts have to travel, if they so wish to compete in the Scottish shows, only once. Whereas the Scottish courts, they have to travel south of the border every time they wish to compete. And the Scottish courts, they incur vast expenditure on transportation costs. Money is tight, uh, so obviously our job is far more difficult. Uh, to keep to keep uh, corps economically viable. You know when they went from band to drum corps, it cost around about fourteen thousand pounds to equip them with new uniforms and instruments. You know, because they went from E flats to valves. You know, because they had to be all chains, and because it cost a lot of money. Mm. And that's where we came in. You know, working hard and hard as we could to raise it as fast as we could raise it. It was being spent. You know, and that's see, there's another thing there. You get people who say. 
Oh yes, I was sponsor. I remember the Tony getting all the sponsors. Oh, I got a lot of money. And when he went to get the money, he said, oh no, we never expected you to do 22 lengths in the bars, only a two lengths. But new uniforms and instruments are not the only thing you can get through a drum car. We spend so much time together and probably more or less every weekend throughout the summer, we're mixing with other calls and you know, people from different parts of the country. So it's quite easy to meet someone. We, we went abroad on, on holiday and we said, right, if we have a good holiday, we'll you know, get engaged and married. And we had a nice holiday together. Didn't go on each other's nerves or anything like that. And it was okay. We'd all been out one evening, uh, it was somebody's birthday in the family and we'd been out for a meal and Graham come along as well and uh, when we got home he asked Excuse Ron me. and I if... Mr uh, Finney, can I marry yeah. your daughter? And I thought <laughs> I'd gone back to the 18th century because yeah. they never used to, they used to do it then but nowadays they just say we're getting married but uh, he did, he come, you know. He asked if we had any objections. And... I asked him if he had a dowry and he said... <laughs> means total commitment from the parent. The parent normally has to run them to competitions if they're local. If they're not local, it means getting them prepared for the competition, making sure their uniforms, well, that's the, the mother's job, but uniforms, shoes, flags, instruments are all clean. And then, of course, going to support the band when they get to the competition. Drum Corps UK competitions have only been going for about two years in Scotland. Prior to drum corps, they had maybe had two years of British Youth Marching Band Championships, but uh, this is about this is the third the third national competition held in Scotland, one in Edinburgh, and this is the second one at Scotson Showground. I'm in the Colour Guard, and I do it because it's great enjoyment, and you meet a lot of new people and go a lot of places. The girls, they're never bored. I've heard a lot of other mums uh, saying that their teenagers are always sitting about the house bored, fed up, nothing to do. I never hear my girls saying that they're fed up, they've always got too much to do. <laughs> okay. That's true. It can only bring good, especially especially when things are so quiet and the jobs job scene. So the competitions start to build up to the final. More and more rehearsal, cleaning, polishing and one or two special things to take care of when looking after your instruments. They look after the instrument by cleaning it most, mostly once a week, something like that, and make sure when you practice you always empty or spit out of it or else it'll go all
Well, it's obvious that it's all going to be worth it, but there's a long way to go before Dagenham Crusaders get to the final. Keith is a long way to go before he becomes part of the grass line of Dagenham Crusaders. But he's not the only one having trouble. Drum Corps benefits from music education in this country. It doesn't benefit as much from music education in Canada because Canada's music education programs, uh, especially at the junior high school and high school level, is about five to seven or eight years below or uh, behind ours. And uh, in Great Britain, probably at the same pace back of our activities. And as a result, it isn't the drum and bugle corps activity in Great Britain and in Canada are not benefiting from music education as well as the, the drum corps in the United States. That gives the drum corps a little bit of an advantage in terms of taking the kid off the street, so to speak, already knowledgeable of how to play a brass instrument, how to, how to perform with percussion equipment, and also uh, how to read music. It's faster to teach a person uh, and to design a program uh, when you have a person who can sit and read music, sight read the music, and you determine, well, it doesn't quite sound right, uh, we'll, we won't play that selection, we'll do this. Whereas if you don't have a performer that reads, uh, it takes a little longer to determine whether or not that would suit your program, and as a result, there's the time factor. I would say our, our drum corps have an advantage, and it's going to take a while for the other countries to catch up, but it'll all stabilize. So, Keith has another go. this time. The rehearsals go on for hours. Drum line, horn line, colour guard, all working towards that first competition. Uh, but it's only a matter of time before music education uh, reinforces the drum corps program. Now remember, music education is one thing, drum and bugle corps is another. Music education teaches the well-rounded uh, theories of music and, it, it, and communicates it as an art form. And in Drum and Beetle Corps, we just use music and marching as a vehicle to compete, so it's a sport, which may be an extension of music education. However, that music education base is extremely important to how soon we get to where we're going with our sport. Well, let's see if Dagenham has got to where they're going, with Don't Cry Out Loud, performed at this year's final. <laughs>
similar to rehearsal, I'm sure you'll agree. And there are other hardships. Dagenham has spent much of the time travelling in coaches and sleeping in school halls as they enter competitions throughout the United Kingdom and this year in America. Rob talked to Laura Beasley, Dagenham's colour guard instructor from the USA. Well, I'm the colour guard instructor, I'm a member of the staff. I teach um, the flags and rifles of the Corps. I teach them new routines and work to help them polish and clean um, the ones that they've already learned. Now, how did you get into this? You used to be in the drum corps yourself, or you were in one yourself? Yes, I was a member of an um, American drum corps, and uh, after I finished with that, I got a call from England um, asking if I was interested in going back to England and working with um, the Crusaders. And of course you said no, right? Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was an offer that I couldn't refuse. You said yes. Yes, I said yes, so here I am. <laughs> So you can see the world and, and all sorts of things with this kind of thing. Sure can. It's um, it's a, for me. It's a good way to see um, other parts of the country and to visit another country in this case. Do you find that the kids are receptive to what you're doing in terms of teaching? Yes, they're they're very interested. First of all, because I was in an American drum corps and it's uh, very different for them and. Uh, I know different things, uh, different routines than from what they're used to and have a lot of new ideas that I can try out on them as well as teach them things I already know. So it's fun for both of you. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy working with the kids. Um, Good so, bunch? Yeah, they're, they're nice kids. They really are. They're a lot of fun. They've been real nice to me. Kind of, you know, accepted me as one of their own. So I'm having a good time. Young people go into the military uh, and they see the organization as being irrational and oppressive. There's a, there's a negative feel about discipline in the military. In the Drum and Bugle Corps, there's the same amount of discipline, there's the same amount of hard work, the incredible demands that are made on them, but they see the demands as being demands that will give them something that they want to have, that they, they're reaching for us a, a high that they don't really have a chance to get any other way. It may be the first kind of an experience like this for them in their lives. So yes, the, the long hours are, are tough and, and uh, the conditions are, are terrible. They have to sleep on gym floors and so forth. But uh, they get close to kids their own age. There's a comradeship that comes out of that that, that uh, may be the first experience like that for them in their lives. But you really can't look at music uh, as though it were in a test tube. Uh, certainly if you have any musical interest yourself, which I do. Um, so I abandon all <clears throat> pretense of being objective and scientific. I, I try to look at it as objectively as I can, but um, the reality is that after I saw my first show, uh, I, I saw immediately that it was something that I wanted to participate in as a parent, uh, as a supporter, uh, as a proselytizer, if you will, because I, I have seen so many good things happen uh, to the kids who are in the activity, and I see wonderful things happen to people who are just spectators and who have the experience of going to the shows and, and, and seeing something really worthwhile which they hadn't suspected existed. There are six more programs in this series and I hope you'll stay with us to the build-up of the world finals at the Orange Bowl in Miami. And we leave you with more of the Bridgemen from New Jersey playing our theme tune Black Market Juggler. Oh, and by the way, there's more to come. The Bridgemen only came in Latin. See you Thursday.